Welcome back to the Glory Hunter save here at Malaga currently and aiming to win the Copa del Rey this year if we can. We're a little way off the top of the table. Not a long way away. Five points off Villarreal, seven points off Barcelona, but they do both have a game in hand. Equally, so to the majority of sides below us as well. So just as much as we're looking up, we are slightly looking over our, in fact, even more so, looking over our shoulders at those below. I'd love to finish top four this season with Malaga, though. We're in the January transfer window. At least we will be when I advance one more day. We're on New Year's Eve at present. So the squad does need improving, obviously. But where we're looking to improve it isn't necessarily in the most obvious area. 82 rated Calderon, as we were discovering in the last episode, to be fair, as we've been discovering all season, doesn't quite have the physical capability to make an impact from the start in every game centrally we tried him out wide with Nana C centrally Nana C did better than Calderon does and Calderon still wasn't hugely impressive outside of a couple of fleeting moments meaning that I am looking in this transfer window to move Calderon to my bench and use him as an impact player only sell Kevin and use Jan Kuto as part of, as a player swap deal, to bring someone else in. However, it is my preference, if I can, to loan someone or sign someone as a free agent rather than sign someone permanently. Mainly because we've had a couple of dud transfers so far. We bought Amy at centre-back. He's been a bit iffy. We bought Sh well, we signed Shola Shoratiwe as a free agent. He wasn't great either, despite the higher rating. And Jan Kuto, we signed as a free agent. He hasn't made the impact I hoped he would do either. And he's now out for two months. And we're going to look to use some new, look to use him as part of a deal if we bring someone in permanently. And I've got a number of names on my shortlist for potential bought or loaned players. Some of which are free agents. Some of which are currently at other clubs. Now, jumping out immediately is Garnacho. So if I can get him on loan, I'd be banging. We can't get him on loan. I'm not going to be able to afford to buy him. So Garnacho will not be bought. But I'll leave him on the shortlist for now. Because if we do find someone in the short term, then maybe I would go for Garnacho in the summer. But perhaps we might be aiming slightly higher than Garnacho in terms of rating and overall performance come the summer with a bigger budget. I'm really torn at the minute with Garnacho. We've obviously signed Palistri. We've obviously signed uh, Shora Tire so far. So we're signing a lot of... United X youngsters Garnacho is there. Amadiello would be another name that could be thrown into the mix. So maybe for that reason, we will lean away from Garnacho. We shall wait and see. But moving forward, we're going to push into the window. Obviously, got scout reports out waiting for the time being. We have three games this month: Las Palmas, Almeria, and Villarreal. Villarreal above us in the league. If we can beat them this time, then a top two finish could be on the cards. However, they are far enough away from us that even if we do beat them we still might not catch them but we're in great form right now 12 unbeaten winning most of those games as well and we should get at least two victories today Las Palmas and Almeria should be pretty straightforward so well, although I said that last time I played Las Palmas and Almeria having rotated my side a little bit it wasn't straightforward we scraped 2-1 wins we'll see how things go today waiting for those scout reports first and then taking it game at a time Amy has now left us to go on loan to Villarreal and hopefully he'll get some good experience there and grow. I've called a couple of those youngsters that were in my youth academy up to the first team squad as well. Although with the aim of loaning Fuentes and Ramiro Guerra out, Fuentes is already being approached by Villarreal B, their second team that are in the second division here in Spain. We've got a number of youngsters out on loan, none of which yet really in a position to affect the first team squad, unfortunately. So might be another year yet before they're in that position. But we're going to be here another year yet at Malaga as well with regards to the league title. But the Copa del Rey could be done this season, absolutely. And we will prioritise that when the time comes. But for now, the priority is transfers. And hopefully in time, they'll arrive. Now, of the two of today's weaker opponents, Las Palmas are certainly the significantly weaker of them. When we played them earlier in the season, about eight games ago, they had five points. They now have seven. 
But to be fair, Almeria are also second bottom. So neither side are having a very good season at all. This Las Palmas one, we will... I mean, they, they are... They couldn't be any worse. They somehow nearly managed to get a draw against us last time we played them. In fact, they nearly managed to beat me. It was only two goals in the last 20 minutes or so that saw us beat them last time around. But from a sim, we should be able to get the job done here against a side that are not in good form, evidently. Don't have good players, as we know. So we should see them off. Even though it's away from home, our quality should show through throughout the course of 90 minutes. Nice. Regulon's in space. Roberto! As soon as Roberto brought that down and had it at his feet, utter entire faith that he would tuck that away. As ever, when we are in need, he steps up. Corner. That's cleared. Not fully, though. Mm, Mbete's trying his hardest. Luke Mbete just bulldozes his way through. Nobody was stopping him there. Malaga 2, Las Palmas nil. We will get the victory here against bottom of the table. And they'll stay with just seven points from 20 games. Ugh. That's a god-awful season for them so far. They cut adrift already by over 10 points. And, well, let's be honest. Even if they have a significantly improved second half of the season, they are going down. We, however, have aspirations right at the very top as Roberto adds his second and our third. That's a dub. And we'll push on towards the game against Almeria, but we should have some scout reports back in the meantime. Transfer bid from PSV for Kevin. 7.4. Reckon I can get up to 8. Point, was it 8.7 or 8.9? 8.7. I'll ask for... Dare I say 10? And... I'll just change that to 9.4 and see if they're even willing to negotiate a little bit. Which they're not willing to negotiate a little bit because they've just said yes straight away. Well, that's more than I thought I'd get, actually. Del Rosen for Pandea plus five and a half million? No. Pantea's been solid, actually. Very impressed with him. Hadn't heard of him when you guys suggested him in the, in the summer of the first season. And, uh, well, certainly he's going to be on my radar for future series and maybe in different footballing games as well on Football Manager because he has certainly impressed in this save so far. And Tottenham have bid for Estequillo. He's not a player I'm looking to sell on, but is he a player that I could do without in the short term? If I could get a big fee from Tottenham for a 32-year-old, by big fee I mean like 22 million plus, for an 80, for a 32-year-old, that is only got one more season left on his contract. Well, that might offer up an opportunity. We hadn't thought about selling Estequio, but oh, nice. Chavez is up to 82 now as well. But I certainly could throw Makengo in there as they compare to each other pretty evenly, actually. Makengo could start, and Estequio would leave, and that would free up some money. That's actually almost perfect. I do like Estequio, but I have to negotiate this. I have to try and make this work. This could really change the outcome of this transfer window. If I can get upwards of 22 and a half million, they reckon I could get up to like 24-ish. I'll ask Antonio Conte if he's willing to come near it and well 24 million is agreed now that drastically changes the transfer window because it means that a number of other players that previously we thought were slightly too high rated become available and with the season we're having we are absolutely with ted lasso in charge an agreeable and a appealing move game on transfer window game on for the season Almeria are very similar to how they lined up a couple of days ago with some genuinely good players in there, including Dane Scarlett and Joey Fearman. But uh, whether they're good enough to deal with us at full strength, I highly doubt. They gave us a very good game when I played them with a slightly rotated team. But 
I mean, anticipating this one to go pretty straightforwardly, meaning then we can take five of the ten outfield players out, hopefully after about 50 minutes or so, and then they'll be well rested for the game against Villarreal in just a few days' time. That's my plan. Nicely read by Pantea. Estequillo through the gap here to Palistri. We've got many a man in the middle to look for, but Kumbula gets in the way. Get that back. Oh, that was nicely done. Estequillo gets destroyed by Dane Scarlett, and a yellow card is picked up. It's probably a bit too far out to shoot. So we'll try and stand this towards the back post where hopefully someone can get on the end of it. That someone might be Nanasi. Oh, how's he kept that out? It fell to Estequillo, who very nearly, with his parting gift, gave us a 1-0 lead. Sure, he'll sign for Tottenham. There's no way a Malaga player turns down Tottenham, is there? I wouldn't have thought so. And Bete to Estequillo again. He could still have a parting gift. That being the gift of an assist. Roberto! I think Lane saved that with the inside of his elbow, it almost looked like there. The pressure building on the Almeria goal. Pellistri delivers again. Roberto's in front of one man this time. It still will fall for Calderon. And Bete Estequillo. It's looping, but it's looping straight into the keeper's arms. Having Nanasi central means that both he and Roberto could get on the end of aerial balls. Try and cut this back here if we can. It's Calderon. It's on his weak side. Oof. But he still strikes it well enough. Lane with another save. Try again. Nana sees up. Heads it wide. Still good. Jadson. Oh, and Bete. That's brilliant. It's just so good at cutting balls out like that. I love Luke and Bete. He and Roberto are the uh, the two players that just play so much better than their actual rating. Polisher is going to get to this and keep it in. And I need that ball back. Roberto inside. Chavez. I was going to say Chavez, surely. Well, it should have been Chavez, surely. Roberto, Pulistri, back to Roberto again. And he can't find the teammate on this occasion. Almeria just throwing so many bodies back there that there aren't any gaps to play the ball through. There are, however, gaps in my defensive line as we push forward and bodies get positioned differently. I was hoping to be two or three goals to the good by this point and have already made some substitutions. Not as straightforward against Almeria again, proving that that game that we had against them a couple of days ago was no fluke. It wasn't because we were playing a weakened side that they gave me a good game. It was just because they were a decent side of their own. That's to Keo, Pelistri, and Nanasi. Pelistri to Chavez. Nanasi's in a good spot. If Roberto can make the right run, I could have found him if the pass actually went towards him. Okay, let's make a change. We'll get it quickly forward to Roberto there. And Albert Gomez is in here. And Albert Gomez has just won us that game in the 82nd minute. Roberto dropped a bit, helping someone else score this time. It was a combination that worked well for us in the second half of last season, to be fair, with Albert Gomez up top and Roberto at centre forward behind him. It's working well for us here as well. Thank you, Roberto. Good touch from Gomez. And then he's just got the legs to get away. You love to see it. Malaga won his first goal of the season in his ninth game. Almeria nil. We scraped three points against them last time. It looks like we're going to do the same again. Just trying to shield it. Not getting forward as freely as he might like to. Bovers in behind though. Milovanovic. Bove again. Oh, Edward. That is just not good, is it? That is a simple save for a goalkeeper of his quality. And he's let me down there. To be fair, he's getting away from him the whole time. Maybe I need to see that from a different camera angle. Perhaps I'm being a bit hard on Edouard Mendy here. If I am, then I apologise. As the shot comes in, it is... Oh, I think he should save that. Mm, doesn't look like we're going to get a win here. Unless. Nope, we're not going to get a win here. That's going to be a 1-1 draw against Almeria. Bugger. Let's go and make ourselves feel better with a transfer if we can. Although there's only three days until Villarreal. I'm going to try and get Michael Elise in. If they're interested in 
Kuto, which I pray to hell they are, then we might be good here. 12 million plus yen Kuto. Please be interested in Kuto. They are. Okay. That's me being a happy boy then. And we might be able to get him 12.9 plus yen Kuto. Oh. Things just went up a notch. Things just went up a couple of notches. Michael Elise currently at Viacano in the league as well. Which makes it bit more realistic than if we were buying him directly from Crystal Palace. Well, certainly a lot more realistic than if we were buying him from Crystal Palace. Um, who want Crucial. I'll give it to him. Oh, let's go! Now, what does he want wage-wise? Give me an idea. I'll do 91-ish. Good. I mean, I'd take that all day long, wouldn't I, really? Let's be honest. So, if you'll... I imagine you'll want a bit of a wage-rise and you can see that I've got enough in the budget, certainly. So, 25,000 a week. Oh, yes, boys. Michael Elise is in. What a signing. Stefan, Stefan, Stephen. Well, oh, he's French, I guess. Stefan Estequio is gone to Spurs. And, well, we have spent the money made from that more than wisely, I feel. Yan Kuto plus 12.9 million surely is an A. I think so, too. Excellent deal. Agreed. Wow. We were not looking to make a signing of that quality at this stage of the save. At this stage of our time with uh, with Malaga, at this stage of the season. The squad is significantly depleted now, however. So I am going to have to look to try and get some more players in. But I can probably bulk out with some free agents for the time being. Knowing that I already kind of have the quality in depth at fullback and at centre back and at centre mid and at cam striker and uh, out wide with Calderon and Amur, that the squad is in a really good spot right now. Then I just perhaps need a couple of players to give me that extra little bit of depth and players. Well. Yippee, yippee, could come off that list. Players like Jakob Brun Larsen could absolutely offer that sort of depth as well. But I am thinking I might need another centre mid before I sign someone that is primarily out wide. Like a, a deeper centre mid. Because, as we've seen, I only have Bondo as a go-to player in that position now. Because neither Amour nor Calderon, despite the fact they have centre mid in their positions... I mean, Amor actually gets a plus two, to be fair. So he's not that bad. But oh, I would like to bulk the squad out a little bit more if I can. So I'll try and do that between now and the end of the window. But for the time being, it's time to go and play Villarreal and put Michael Elise to the test. Okan Jackie in goal for Villarreal. They have strengthened, of course, in the transfer window with the loan signing of Wisdom Amy from me. He has immediately grown since joining them, which is good news for me and good news for them. If you recall, last time we played them, they had 87-rated Gabriel and then two 72-rated centre-backs as their other options. So significantly improves them now, does Wisdom Amy. Got Julian Alder on the wing, or, sorry, at fullback, and then Ryan Aitnuri at fullback on the other side. They're probably both wing-backs at this stage. Vencedor and Genduzi is a very good midfield pivot with Lazaro on the left and Nadia Ibrahim on the right. Algerian, that'll be a Riyad Mahrez region, then won't it? Enes Unal up top and Jesus Ferreira, the man that's chasing down or sticking with, whichever way we look at it now, might have changed since we last looked at uh, our own Roberto for the top goal scorer uh, tally this season. This is going to be a really tight game, as it was last time. We drew to, with Virial 1 1, I think. Elise now joins as my joint highest outfield rated player. You see, Edouard Mendy is our overall best rated player, but he's now dropped to 84 rated as well. So uh, he's come down from 86 to 84 since we signed him. I'm retraining Elise as a left wing as opposed to a cam. It's only taking a couple of weeks and hopefully it won't be long before we have him 
in a position where he's going to be growing overall as well. And that quickly forward there to Palistri into Nanasi. I'm going to try for a worldie. And Jakir is going to deny me. Ibrahim, Ben Sador, Unal, Ferreira. It's opened up here on the wing. Yeah, here's Alder forward from right back. Very nearly running it straight off the pitch, but does find Enes Unal. And they pass it straight to me. Chavez can't get it out of his feet quickly enough, though. Nor can he win it back. And Ibrahim finds Genduzi, who tackles him again. Chavez caught in possession. Deary me. It's not Chavez's fault. There's just no room there. But we've worked it away well on this occasion there. Get it back inside to Elise. So he's good dribbling feet. Really looking forward to using Michael Elise. I'd love to use him on FM, but I've not found myself at a club that is good enough to... Uh, to entice him to join on FM. He's even better, Michael Elise. Makengo into Nanasi. Oh, lift this looking for Palistri. If he can get there first, we might be in. Right, Nuri does well, as does Makengo there. Roberto, ah, can't quite find the ball through. And no free kick, but Makengo, well, maybe I don't need another centre mid. Makengo doing the job so far, isn't he, defensively? Just as good as Estekio. Nanasi, I'll lift it looking for Elise. I don't know, actually, if he has the finesse shot trait. I was initially intending on finding someone, case in point, that has a finesse shot trait because some other players I have in those positions don't have it. He does have the finesse shot trait. Cracking. However, he's currently left-footed with a two-star weak foot. We are training that weak foot, however. So maybe I put Palistra on the other side, move Elise to the right, and that way... We can use that finesse shot trait when he cuts inside. Either way, we are a better team with him with us, for sure. That kid's head is twice the size of his bloody torso. I don't need to be losing possession there, though, do I really? That's not going to help me win a bloody game of football. That Saro could look for Jesus Ferreira. I'm trying to position Vitic well enough to so sure he can't get it to him, which we have done. Then fouled the man on the edge of the box. Lovely back heel, and that's the quality of finish that sees Villarreal where they are in the table and sees Jesus Ferreira chasing the top is it the Pachichi I think the top the uh, golden boot in La Liga is it called the Pachichi I might be well off with that Vitic with the ball out wide here so we're going to try and build ourselves back into it 16 goals in 22 games for Jesus Ferreira so he's stopped scoring as readily as Roberto has done of late as well so I think Roberto might still be at the top end of the goal scoring charts he could have had his level there but he's fired that one wide Antea, Mikengo and Elise unbelievable oh, footwork from Michael Elise and a lovely ball down the wide, down the wide, down the line here to Pantea, out wide might fall for Chavez if he can win that header it's going to drop to Mikengo nice ball into Palistri, Roberto surely from here I love him just Besotted, well and truly head over heels in love with Roberto. It's 1-1 against Villarreal. That was a brilliant finish. Shot power, too much for the keeper to handle there. Recycled possession with Makengo. Palistri into him and then he's just thumped it. Unsavable. Ibrahim, Unal again. Ferreira, is spun and Bete. Bete's back in position to try and do something. Alder. Ibrahim, Ferreira, this is... Ominous, to say the least, from Virial. Oh my god, how are you even supposed to defend against passing like that? I'm at a loss. Absolute loss to, as to what to do in situations like that. Roberto should clear this. He hasn't. Oh my god, a mixture of Regulon and or the keeper. Get rid of it off the line. I still can't get the ball out of the danger area though. Genduzi, back to Enesu now. Mm, don't do what you just did again, please, with that passing, because it's undefendable. Fit it, get rid. And breathe a sigh of relief. Oh, this is awkward. I don't I don't like it when I've got such few players back here like that. And Bete, we just managed to position him well enough. And I'm just going to pump this with Palistri just to get it anywhere away from my goal. I've had substitutions ready to be made for the last five minutes or so, but they're not going to get the chance to come on. It's just a case of, can those that are already on the pitch stop Villarreal from winning the game? The answer is yes. At two attempts, they couldn't beat us at La Rosa later. We can't beat them away from home. From the home of the yellow submarine. Unfortunately, neither side able to get a victory. 
Again, as was the case with the first game, though, if either side was going to get the victory, it was probably going to be Villarreal. Pleased enough with the points in a game that difficult. Keeps our top four hunt very much alive. And, well, I wonder if Barcelona slip up, whether the title is maybe a possibility this year. I just don't think so. We're certainly challenging for top four. Yeah, we're 12 points off Barcelona. The league title is not happening this year. Clearly, we need to be another level if we're to keep up with Barcelona and whoever go with them. This year, it's been Villarreal. Real Madrid are recovering slightly up to fifth now. Atleti fallen well off the wagon, down to seventh for Atleti here. When is that game against Espanyol? It's not been drawn this month, has it? Oh, my Lord, it has. Okay. Uh, Espanyol in the cup to come then. I wasn't planning on doing that today. In fact, I don't think I will. I will save that for the next episode and just see what you... Uh, I would be interested in selling Bondo. But maybe not yet because I don't have enough to go out and sign someone that is genuinely good enough to come in and play. Or does that... Would that open up the opportunity... To maybe sign someone sig significantly better in CDM. My budget at the minute is 14. Selling Bondo for 15 or 16 is not going to really... I'm not going to sign anyone that is significantly better than Makengo for 30 million-ish. Am I? Really? I've got... I've got Darko Gabby on the list. Benebe is there, to be fair. And he's... Okay, right. Sell Bondo and get Benebe. 81 stand tackle, 83 finishing. Great in the in the dribble. 82 short passing and long passing. Uh, I will let the YouTube comment section decide this one. But I think I know what you're going to say. I think you might say yes. We do have got Darko Gabby as an option. And he's good with the ball at his feet. But he's not amazing in the tackle and not amazing in the short pass. So I don't think he's ready yet. He's going to be no better than Warren Bondo. And that would just be a like-for-like like change, which isn't really the idea. The idea would be to improve. And with Benebe valued at 22 million, we absolutely could improve. I'll leave it for you guys to decide. Maybe you reckon I keep Bondo and give Makengo a go. Because Makengo is only... Ah, he's 30. I thought he was younger than that. Makengo's 30, but he's been brilliant when he's come in. So it'll be Copa del Rey football, transfer deadline day, and then Bilbao tomorrow, followed by Hatafe, Atleti, and Real Madrid after that. And maybe another round of the Copa del Rey thrown in there as well. Okay. Transfer deadline day and the rest of the window will come to you tomorrow then. And what happens in it is entirely up to you. That's all for this one today. Thank you very much for watching. Do drop the video a like if you've enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on more. This is going to be intriguing. See you then.